Brace yourself for the shootout of hydraulic versus solid roller lifters, take two. Our shootout on this episode of Engine Masters is gonna be hydraulic versus solid roller lifters on the same camshaft. Now, if you throw your mind back to episode 10 of the Engine Masters show, you know that we've kind of done this before. Now we're down to today's comparison, which is the hydraulic roller camshaft versus the solid roller camshaft. And the key there is the lifter design. But back then, we used two different camshafts, one of which was designed for hydraulic lifters and the other designed for solid. And the solid, honestly, is a more aggressive profile. We spec them out so that the RPM range would be about the same, but of course the solid won because it had more lift. It was a more aggressive cam. And a lot of people said, this isn't an accurate shootout. What I want to see is nothing more than the change between the lifter itself, the hydraulic versus the solid. And I thought to myself, well, that's kind of dumb because if you were gonna run solid roller lifters, why wouldn't you take advantage of the more aggressive ramp that you can use with a solid lifter? But Brule actually tells me that he's been running into scenarios where there are people who want to run solid lifters on their hydraulic roller camshaft. Well, you're gonna see that shootout now. We're changing nothing more than the lifters itself to find out if there is a performance difference between hydraulic and solid. Now, let me tell you about the Dino Mule that we're gonna be running here. This engine is awesome. We've had it around West Tech for a decade plus. It is a Dart SHP 372 cubic inch short block. You can buy this thing complete. This is straight out of the box. It's got like 5,000 dyno pulls on it. It's 372 cubic inches, which is an odd combination of bore and stroke. It's a four and an eighth inch bore and a stock 350 Chevy stroke, which is 3.48 inches. That gives us a 372. The compression ratio on it's about 10 and a quarter to one. The cylinder heads are the key to this thing making a little bit more than 500 horsepower. They are Airflow Research 195cc inlet runner cylinder heads. They're aluminum, of course. Up top, we've got the Edelbrock dual plane air gap intake manifold and a Holley 850 XP carburetor. Of course, the heart of the matter for this particular episode is gonna be the camshaft. And it is a crane grind straight out of the book, nothing custom. It is meant to be run with hydraulic lifters. The duration on this thing is 242 degrees on the intake, 244 on the exhaust, a 110 lobe separation angle. And we're gonna see more than 500 horsepower and we're gonna be looking very carefully at things like valve float and the shape of the curve and things like that and finding out if there are any benefits to changing from the hydraulic roller, which we're gonna run right now, and the solid, which we'll be adding later on in the show. Of course, the other thing is, if you wanna run solid roller lifters on a hydraulic roller camshaft, there's some things you gotta know in order to do that safely and properly, and we'll show you that too. Let's roll this thing in there and fire it up and find out what it makes. Stevie B, you're back. Good yeah, to be yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, Happy to have you. So. He called me a couple weeks ago with this idea of testing solid and hydraulic roller lifters on the same camshaft. I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> then I hit you with it and you were like, why would you do that? So Steve, why would we do this? And this all started a couple years ago. It was mostly from the Marine guys. They were kind of interested in, hey, can I run a solid lifter on this hydraulic roller cam? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. So I called some of the smarter guys than me, like Billy Godbold and mm -hmm. Chris Potter and said, this is what I'm hearing. And they said, no, we actually think that'd be kind of a cool test. Let's see what happens. And yes, you can run a solid roller on a hydraulic camshaft. You just tight lash it. Mm -hmm. Well, and then kind of within this interim of the last 60 days or so, I've had three engines that I've seen lower level hydraulic roller lifters actually stick plungers, collapsing while running. Oh, we've seen that a zillion times. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like, why do you want to put up with that? And always that question of, am I missing 25 horsepower that I could have for nothing? Right. So I thought it would just be a fun test to see what the difference is, but kind of my thinking was to go with a better lifter to start with, a good hydraulic roller, to see really kind of what the effects are. I mean, we can show poorly assembled or poorly built lifters. Mm -hmm. A better one always makes power. Right. So let's start with some really good stuff and see what the solid actually does. It'll be interesting, because it's always the dilemma of, you get a hydraulic and is it gonna float the valves? Is the plunger gonna leak down? Are you gonna have a problem with that? Rule number one is once you run into lifter instability, you are through making power. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's <laughs> just the bottom line. Your day line. is over. Yeah. Well, think if we make an extra 10 or 15 horsepower here, yeah. which 
is questionable. But if we did, solid lifter sales are going to go up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and let's find out. So the first thing that we're going to do here is fire up our little 372 and do a baseline run with a good crane hydraulic roller lifters in it. So there's our baseline as we've seen with this engine many times. It makes 471 pound-feet and 502.7 horsepower at 6,500. And now we go put solid lifters in it and see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see. Ready? Not much room for improvement there. <laughs> it's a pretty good motor. Yeah. All right, rip it. Ready? We're removing this set of lifters right here, which is the hydraulic setup, and we're installing the solid over here. You can see the hydraulic setup has a longer lifter body, which is very typical, because inside here there is a, a little cup and a piston and a clip and a spring, so there's a whole bunch of mechanical stuff in there that makes that hydraulic plunger happen, but it also makes the lifter heavier. Now, you can see the solid lifter, as a result of not having all that stuff, can often be designed shorter, and that means they usually need a longer push rod for the solid lifter. So adding up the weight of the lifters themselves and also compensating for the difference in push rod length, we're saving 49.88 grams per pair of lifters by going to the solid. So while you normally think of a solid roller cam and a solid lifter needing a really heavy valve spring, in this case, we haven't changed the cam profile, but we are making the lifter combination per pair almost 50 grams lighter. So our situation on valve spring control of the lifter should get way better, theoretically. Now we're at the point of lashing the solid lifter on the hydraulic camshaft. Normally with a hydraulic lifter, you'd put preload in it. You actually bring your lash to zero and then put in half to three quarters of a turn extra. This time we can't do that or we will hang valves open. And so Steve is going for zero lash that once the engine heats up and the cylinder head expands, we'll probably go to two or three, whatever your guess is. And you know, they talk like, oh, we'll lash it at 2000. Using a 2000s feeler gauge is hard. Yeah. So I'm just really, going I'm, going, I'm going to zero and that's actually easier for me to do. What you don't want to do if you're duplicating this is set all of your lash really tight when it's hot because then when the engine cools down, it'll hang valves open and the engine won't want to start. Yeah, it'll have zero compression. Yeah, it'll be a mess. Not good for starting. Well, we're close. We've got all the lifters in, got it all kind of pretty much buttoned up. If I can figure out how to get the distributor in one last time, then uh, we should be good to go. All right, I'm ready to answer the question I would have never asked. <laughs> he really has not been 100% on board with this whole no. thing. Well, no, I, I'm learning. It's going to be very interesting. It's like I never thought to do this, but I am seeing the advantages, and I can see how if that lifter is lighter, that could be a more stable valve yeah. train, could make more power. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities here. Right. So, All right, fire it up. Some more horsepower. <laughs> yeah. And it looked a little better on the roll in too. Juan Brulio, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. So we made 474.9 pound feet of torque, which is up, and 511.7 horsepower, also up. But let's look at the whole curve. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> look at that comparison. Black lines here with the solid lifters and redder with the hydraulic, and clearly mm -hmm. it made more power everywhere except for for some reason right around, you know, 5,500, 4,900 RPM. There yeah. was a little squiggle, but everywhere else it made more power. Question is, why? Because normally what we would think through here is that we're running this lifter on the same camshaft. Now, if we're looking at typical camshaft profile, solid versus hydraulic, we generally think you have to run a larger solid to be the equivalent duration of a hydraulic because of the lash. But now we've got no lash, so that's not really an issue. There is a little bit of lash. A little bit, so the duration might be tiny, tiny, tiny bit less with the solid lifter here. I don't think here. that's the whole picture because basically, with the hydraulic mechanism, that push rod pushing into the lifter is pushing into a marshmallow. And yeah. it's losing a little bit of motion all the time and it gets worse at higher RPM. Whereas a solid, solid. Does it get worse at higher RPM? I thought that the point of like, you know, those old Rhodes lifters was that they would bleed down and make the camshaft seem smaller at low RPM. And when oil pressure went up, that it would have more lift and duration at high RPM. Yeah, but there's less time for the lifter to refill against the uh, push rod. It's got to replenish all the oil that's lost around the plunger. And if you look at where a hydraulic usually goes unstable, it's gonna be right at the top. That's where it, it really just falls apart in your lift. But is that because of the weight of it or collapse. is that because of the hydraulic absorption thing that you're talking about? Or is it because of separation and the lifter's pumping up or is the lifter bleeding off? Bleeding off <laughs> almost every time. Yeah. Because you can take a hydraulic that's giving you problems, set them right at the bottom where there's hardly any plunger travel or put a rod in there to limit the travel, which is a popular new yeah. aftermarket style of lifter to limit yeah. the travel yeah, unit. Yeah, short travel. And it only has 20 thousandths until it goes solid anyway, so there's a, a limitation to the amount of absorption you can get with it. So let's ask this, why would you ever run a hydraulic roller lifter? Or a hydraulic lifter of any kind? Durability, right. quieter, right. less maintenance, and actually pretty darn good. I mean, if you look at this crane, hydraulic roller lifter, it's a, it's a pretty good performing piece. And I've seen a lot of them that are not nearly that good. It, it varies quite oh, yeah, a bit from brand to brand or ma manufacturer. I've got an example, like I was saying a couple weeks ago, where it was like 35 to 40 better putting a good crane in it over brand X. Hydraulic to hydraulic. Hydraulic to hydraulic. And it was, I mean, it was like, wow. Like and, and a just, cheapo lifter versus really good high quality yeah, lifter. Absolutely. So once again, you kind of get what you pay for, I guess. I think what I'm learning from this overall is basically you cannot trust your lifter duration with a hydraulic roller cam. You don't know what you're getting or when. When do you say it's good? You see a that. curve, but when do you say that's what the motor's doing or that's what the lifter's yeah. doing? I can say this much. If you're trying to build a really good high RPM, high performance hydraulic, be it a hydraulic roller or a hydraulic flat tappet, that is the hardest job you're going to have, is making that stable and make it RPM without turning to custard, you know? It, <laughs> it just goes... Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, that's a lot of development. I mean, you can yeah. kind of get there, you get close. This particular engine was used, you know, we'll go to 7,000 easily enough. We had done a hydraulic test a few years ago where we went to 8,000 RPM with a hydraulic roller. Yep. And it looked pretty good. Um, but you but do it I by limiting know. the travel. Yeah. Like all these short travel, all that's doing is making so that the duration can't get worse than X number. In that right? particular case, it was not a limited travel. Crane okay. only makes a full travel lifter and it was a crane hydraulic. So it was a full travel lifter that went to 8,000 RPM. But then the question now in my mind is, okay, it looked good, the curve looked pretty, but, but what, what had we? What would it have done had we put a solid roller on that? Right. And at 8,000 RPM, maybe it would have picked up 10 horsepower. You know, you brought up the durability thing. I'm not taking these out of this engine. I'm you, leaving yeah, them just in keep forever. Running it. I'm just going to keep running it like this happens. and see if yeah. we can answer that durability test because we use this engine a lot. Yeah, it gets a lot of dyno laps on it. Yeah. So yeah. And, and I like it with more power anyway. Of course. <laughs> 512 is way better than 50 whatever, 501. You know, I'm not, we, we answered a lot of questions here. This is kind of cool. Yeah. Now maybe what we need to do is put a hydraulic on a solid cam. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go talk it through, Dolchek. All right. Okay, Dulcich, I've developed a thesis and I need you to debate me. Here's the opening premise. Okay, I'm all ears. Lifters are one of the most annoying parts of the engine. It can be. Well, here's why, okay? So whether it's solid or hydraulic, a flat tappet lifter 
is annoying because you have to break it in. Right. It doesn't work with today's oils. You always fear it's gonna make the camshaft go flat. And that's a problem that's only developed here over like the last 15 years or so, but it's a fact. Right. There is some terror around the flat tappet. So therefore you go to the roller okay. to get rid of that terror. But then if you go with a hydraulic roller, you've got the fear of a heavy lifter that floats valves and you have to get the valve springs just right. And then you've got the fear of not getting the plunger right and having one either fail or float or... There's a lot of really bad hydraulic roller lifters on the market. Right. I've experienced that and they don't RPM very well. And then on the solid roller side of things, Ooh. you've always got the fear of that wheel skidding on the cam and coming apart, which doesn't seem to happen on hydraulics. I think it happens on solids mostly because a solid roller camshaft is so aggressive and we run such hardcore valve springs on it. So are you with me to that? Yeah, point? and I've seen a lot of solid rollers fail in prolonged street use. And then when that happens, the whole engine gets wrecked. That's right. So therefore, did we just discover the actual answer, which is to run a nice, soft, easy, low lift, hydraulic cam profile with a solid lifter. Is that the ultimate answer? I'm, only time will tell because we have to endurance test this whole thing. Bingo, that's the thing, is that I suspect we've stumbled onto that, but there's no way on the dyno today we found out if this setup with the solid lifter on the roller cam is gonna survive from the long haul. But I suspect it might because less lash, Right. Because you were making the point off camera that you think it's that lash on the solid roller that's also just beating up that roller every time the lobe comes around and accelerating and decelerating that wheel. That's got to be a big part of it. And it's not as much of a problem now in this application. But I think there's another facet here that you may not have touched on oh, yet. Oh, really? I'm ready yeah. to school me. Because the solid, wouldn't you agree, it would extract every bit of power that that camshaft has to offer. Okay. Right? There's. There's no give in any hydraulic mechanism. Right. So if you're trying to qualify how good your hydraulics are doing, substitute a solid. If you suspect there's a problem, you might find there's 20, 30, 40 horsepower if you've got a really bad hydraulic. Well, that's what Brule was saying with the hydraulics is because he has seen so many different quality levels of hydraulic lifters, you don't know how high is up. You might run your motor and go, right. oh, it made 480 horsepower. I guess that's all it does. Or it's you pretty good. <laughs> you don't know that you could have put in some of those cranes, which appear to be really nice, and pick up another 20, and then you don't know that solids don't do another 10 above that. That's right. So there is some merit to it in a couple of different ways. Whether or not it's gonna last 100,000 miles on the street, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know that one. But I do know the solid is going to give you every little bit of power that cam has to give. Definitely worth trying. So that's the interesting stuff that we come up with here on Engine Masters. This one, I guess, is food for thought. I would welcome some feedback on our social media. If there's anybody who's taken a hydraulic cam and run it with solid roller lifters for a long time, hey, hit us up. We're Engine Masters on uh, Instagram and we're Hot Rod Engine Masters on Facebook. And of course, he's Steve Dulcich. I'm David Freiberger and Steve Brule is Dino Brule on yeah. Instagram. So hit us up between episodes and then we'll see you next time on Motor Trend on the Engine Masters show. It's gonna be wonderful and it's gonna make 512 horsepower. I'd like to see that. So would I, otherwise it wouldn't look like a putz. <laughs> <laughs>